uh, of, the, of the session. And I want to welcome Rachel Berger. I want to welcome everybody who's here to EdShed Interactive. My name is Mitch Weisberg. Uh, I'm the one who sends out the emails about EdShed Interactive. And uh, Rachel is our penultimate speaker in 2019. Uh, Rachel's a featured speaker at FETC, and that's why she's here tonight. And she's here talking about, um, you know, uh, about tools that really allow you to teach everybody and tools primarily from Microsoft. So, uh, Rachel, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here this evening, sharing with everybody. And um, I, I guess maybe uh, it probably would help. Can you go a little bit into your background? Because I know that you're doing some, yeah. some really interesting work. <laughs> I do, I do. Um, sure. A little bit about me. Um, I am the, I wear a, a couple hats, as many of us do. And so, um, firstly, I'm a learning differences assistive tech consultant with Microsoft. And um, I do a lot of speaking at conferences, um, whether they be education, uh, literacy based, or even learning disability based. We talk about the learning tools that I'll talk um, talk about and share with you this evening. I'm also the executive director of a Minneapolis-based nonprofit called Decoding Dyslexia Minnesota, and we do a lot of advocacy work for kids and educators. Um, so uh, we we also um, some of that advocacy work includes policy, and we've been working on policy um, on behalf of students and their educators for the last seven years. I'm also part of our um, state um, task force on dyslexia and our higher education literacy partnership uh, committee. And last but certainly not least, I am the mother of three sons, two of which have learning differences as well. So that's that's just a little bit about me. Okay, and do you want to start the presentation then? Yeah, sure. So I'm going to start out today and share with you some of the tools that make a really big difference in my my kids' lives and the lives of students that I do some advocacy work for. Um, and so we're gonna we're gonna talk about the learning tools. We're gonna do this a little bit differently than I would at FETC because um, there's just so much to share with you. Um, we couldn't possibly cover it all in in one night. So I want to encourage you if you have the opportunity to do both. Um, I'm going to call out the slide that you have up currently um, because it has my email address and those of you that um, try out the tools that we're going to talk about today, I'd like to hear how it goes for you um, or for your students specifically if we're able to um, level the playing field for them or help them um, achieve more accessibility through these tools. And then even if you're having difficulties, I wanna be able to help you out with that too. So um, make sure to grab a screenshot or take note of the email address. And then let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to give you just a, a, just a little bit of a backdrop as to why some of the, these things are important, the tools that I'm going to be showing you this evening. So, um, let's start with a slide that has a lot of meaning to me, both um, as a mother, as an individual who works uh, as an advocate, and then also someone who um, believes deeply in ensuring that everyone has access in education. And there's, um, so it's this slide that many of you may have seen before on equality versus equity. And there's a common misconception that equality and equity can mean the same thing and that they can be used interchangeably, especially when talking about education. But the truth is that they do not and they cannot. Um, the two words are, are similar, but the difference between them is crucial, especially for students who learn differently. Um, equity encourages access to the same op opportunities specific to need, but before we can enjoy that, um, or before we can enjoy equality, we need to ensure that there's equity. And so I'm gonna show you with some of the tools today how we can provide students equitable access to their curriculum, how we can help them gain in their independence, and how we can help them personalize their learning in a way that works best for them. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is, um, rather than going through a slide deck, 
I know that uh, Mitchell had wanted us to do a little bit more interactive tonight, and I think we've got a nice small group to be able to do that. And so I'm going to get out of this PowerPoint. And we're going to go into um, the apps and start um, looking at some of the demonstration. Um, and keep in mind, if you have questions, there's going to be plenty of time for Q&A and engagement. And so um, Mitchell will help out with those natural breaks. And I want you to be able to ask questions and, and specifically talk about areas where you're maybe experiencing struggles with students that you work with. Okay, so first off, I'm going to show you Immersive Reader. And Immersive Reader was initially created in OneNote, and there are, are other applications um, where you'll be able to find it. But we are in OneNote desktop right now. And we are going to take a look at how the Immersive Reader um, tool enables students text-to-speech. And so under the View tab in OneNote Notebook, we have this little button here called Immersive Reader. And if we click on that button, it's going to put a skin over top of the page for us. And you'll notice that the, the page itself looks a little bit different. We could go to the bottom here and push play, and we'd start having um, text-to-speech. The closest mm -hmm. creature by Kelly Hashway. Bump. Bump. So um, that technology really isn't um, anything new, but what gets really amazing and what Microsoft has done is to enable the individual to personalize how they prefer to consume content. So not everyone who struggles to read struggles for the same reasons. And so I'm going to show you some of the variety of tools you can use. First off, we've got the voice speed and the voice selection. Some people can process information at a tremendous speed, and some people like that speed slowed down. And that has a lot to do with processing speed um, that you have uh, internally. And so um, that varies from individual to individual. Up here to the right, we have text preferences. So I'm gonna click on that button here. And um, let's show you what it would look like had I not manipulated any of this. This is what this skin over top of the page would look like as I start out. Um, my OneNote notebook and Immersive Reader, uh, they all have memory. And so it's assuming that every time I click on this, I want to have things read the same way. And so mine typically reads with the text size around um, in this area. And then it also has spacing. Um, believe it or not, again, uh, not all of us prefer to consume content in the same manner. And so oftentimes when we're talking about um, working with kids who struggle to read, um, spacing makes a really big difference for them. In particular, my middle school son with dyslexia tells me he has to have the spacing in there. Otherwise, what he does is he just reads through um, the page or document and then he gets to the end and he doesn't remember what he read. He specifically says that when there's spacing, it tells his brain to slow down a little bit. Um, and, and, and those are his words. So, um, so if he, that, that is what he needs, he has the ability to determine um, the tools that he'd like and can set that to his preference. These are not controllable by somebody else. Um, so as an educator, um, you can't, um, or your school, they, they don't have control over what tools and features um, someone can use. It is up to the indi individual to um, be able to choose what they'd like. So we've got font choices. Um, we've got background colors. Uh, some individuals have something called convergence insufficiency. Um, sometimes that can go with dyslexia and it can make, um, make individuals have uh, eye strain while they're reading. And so they don't prefer to read black text on white paper. And also we've got individuals who have low vision. Um, and, and so again, having a, a background color will help them with their reading. And so really, no matter what it is that you um, have, or maybe it's just simply preference. All of these tools are at your fingertips to be able to determine, um, again, how you'd like to personalize the consumption of content. Under the, um, the middle icon here, these are our grammar options. And so if I click on syllableification, my words are now broken into syllables all of the while. Our, um, nah. We're highlighting the text in here. Adam opened his eyes and pulled the covers up to. Things they're talking about. Is it so, the, that's syllableification. We also have highlighting of parts of speech. So we can click on a button and have the parts of speech highlighted, showing our labels above. 
And then also because we have that ability to change our background colors, we also want to make sure that we can change the colors um, of the parts of speech so as they don't conflict with the background. Or maybe it's simply that the educator is, is um, determining, hey, let's highlight all of our nouns in green and our verbs in red. So whatever, you, um, whatever reason you wish to highlight um, in a specific color, you have the tools right there at your fingertips. So I'm going to turn those off for a minute so that they're not um, a distraction as we move on to our next uh, set of tools. This is the reading preferences. Now, this is where my favorite tools um, in the Immersive Reader are housed. When we click on this, we have the ability to first off choose our line focus mode. Um, this is based off of the original reading rulers that some of us used when we learned how to read. And so again, knowing that not everybody prefers to see the entire page at one time, um, we have these line focus choices here going from one, three to five or a full page that you could see. Again, all based upon personal preference. Picture dictionary is our next feature and this is one of my absolute favorite. And so if we click on a word, um, when we, there we go, when we click on a word, we have a picture that'll pop up. And this is done in conjunction with our friends, uh, board maker. Uh, they make the visual images for individuals ha who have speech and communication disorders. And so they are providing all the images for our picture dictionary here. And um, it's just, it's just amazing to be able to click on this and get photos that'll pop up. So I love that feature. I'm sorry, I forgot to show you that you can also click on the speaker and then have the word read aloud. I love this one because it shows the two differences. So room as in, you know, living room or the, the other version, which meaning, you know, space wise, like there's more room. So um, lastly, under the reading preferences features, we have translator built in. And so we could, we have one, up to 60 different languages we can choose from, and we could choose just a word, or we could choose to change the entire document. And then from there, you know, we can click on um, play. The closet creature de Kedia Sway. Golpe. Golpe. So immediately we have that text to speech option. We have picture dictionary that then follows in that language. And, um, I mean, it's just wonderful. And then at the top, you'll note that we can toggle between both the original and the Spanish. And so I've got a high school student here at home who, you know, he doesn't have any learning differences, but he has found this tool to help him with his Spanish classes because he can look at the text both in, in Spanish and then in our native language, English, and he's using that as a way to help retain um, some of that language. And, and learn. So these are, in a nutshell, the features that um, you would use to access reading in OneNote. Um, there is a OneNote desktop version that I'm in, and then there's the online version of OneNote as well. Um, so that's just one tool that we've showed right now that has these features built in. And Mitchell, if you'd like to allow people to ask questions now, I can do that before we move on to the other places where they're going to find these unique uh, where they're also going to find Immersive Reader embedded in. Yeah, so um, I guess if you want to, you can type in a question or a comment into the group chat, or you can unmute yourself to ask. In the, in the meantime, I was wondering, are there any of these options that you, that you would coach students to use? Like, for example, speed, um, when, it's, when it's reading out loud, or is it, do, would you coach people to try something that's faster or slower than normal speech or font? Are there particular fonts that you, that you would coach somebody? Why don't you try this first? So, um, and I've got a lot of experience with students with dyslexia. And so when it comes to fonts in particular, I would probably coach them or, or, you know, encourage them to check out comic sans. Um, so here, um, and main reason for that is that it's it's more um, it's not type, it's uh, more like handwriting. And so when you're a someone who's struggling to read, um, you see our G's and our A's are are um, in the style of of our handwriting, and so that can help a little bit. And I might also just because I know. Um, you know, eye strain is something that's very common for people who have struggles to read or dyslexia. I might also um, 
give them the option to use a different background color. Um, in terms of speed, I think that's a really personal thing for people because again, um, you go back to your, your, your processing um, and whether someone might struggle with auditory processing disorder or dyslexia and they're, they're struggling to process language itself, um, that's a really personal thing when it comes to the speed. So I would, I would let them try that out themselves. But I also really, you know, again, really love, uh, you know, if you have a student that maybe is a non-native speaker and having a hard time, I would encourage the use of picture dictionary so that, you know, when they come to words, um, they can click on that and get a photo that pops up and it can help them to be able to um, translate as well. And uh, you've been showing immersive reader with OneNote, but let's say mm -hmm. somebody was reading uh, online. Um, can you, is it possible, could you just show how they would access it if they were on their browser? So, yeah, and that was the next thing we were going to talk about anyway. So let's just go ahead and go over there. Okay. So we would use... By the way, that wasn't for me. So I was, oh. <laughs> you know, but anyhow, but it was, I thought it was a great question. So thank you. It is. So you'd use, um, first, firstly, I, I would use Edge Browser. Oh, is it not work? Just, there we go, screen share. And so the online version that uh, you can use both, uh, let me see if I can move this toolbar out of the way. Here we go. You can use both um, OneNote Online or Word Online, but you know, since I want to show you that it's also available in Word, let's just go ahead and go over to Word Online. And so you would just use you know, Word Online. Um, and, and preferably, you'd use that through Edge Browser. And so here we have um, Word Online pulled up. And then again, you, know, you can insert any type of a, doc, you know, a Word document or anything you've got saved. You would just open that up. You'd go to your view tab and you'd click on immersive reader and so um, this will be a great example again using the online version and showing you guys how um, how it reads different languages so let's move down here so now you'll notice that um, firstly it's the same as as what we just looked at in um, in OneNote and that's because these sync with one another um, so one, it has memory, and two, they sync with one another. So my Word um, online is syncing with my OneNote notebook. And, 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 and you're using Office 365 as you're doing this? Right? Yep. yep. Yes. I do have an Office 365 account, which is free for both educators and students. Um, so having an educator or student email address, those are free and accessible to anyone or any one of those individuals. So let's, let's, um, let's I keep keep moving this toolbar out of my way and then it gets in my way again. So here, we'll just, <laughs> we'll um, space down here and we'll push play so you can hear. Let me try that again. How's the sound coming through, Mitchell? I can, I can hear it. I mean, it's not as clear as when you're talking, but it, I can definitely hear it. Okay. Du siehst den Wald vor lauter Bäumen nicht. Ahogado el niño. Okay, and so we have like up to, I think it's about 60 different languages right now that it can read and translate in. And so that's, you know, again, enabling everyone to have uh, let's close that, access to utilizing these tools. Uh, again, Word, on, uh, Word Online here. And um, both with OneNote and Word, um, again, just opening it. I'm sorry, with Word, you're going to open a document. Let's go back over to OneNote here. And let me just quick show you, because I have a feeling this is going to be the next question that someone asks. How do you get information into OneNote? Well, um, what you want to do is you use the Insert tab. Actually, there's two different ways, but I'm going to show you this one. Use Insert and File, and it's going to pull from your computer. So any Word documents or PDFs, you can just pull them from your computer and insert them in. Um, that way. And then, um, you know, if you're not familiar with OneNote, it's a digital notebook. And so um, you're really just um, so down here, we're, we're able to add sections and pages. So you kind of create your notebook based upon that and you can insert your information in through the insert tab and then go ahead and click on view and immersive reader. Um, any other questions coming? Well, so the other question related is, let, if I were using um, I guess in another program, like uh, let's say that my textbook um, had, had its own program. And so I'm, I'm in my textbook. Can I 
um, can I use immersive reader with third party um, pro, uh, programs? Well, specifically, do you mean like, um, do you mean like an EPUB file of a book? Well, so that's a good question because I was, you know, as soon, soon as I asked it, it was like, yes, okay. So it could be an e EPUB or a PDF, which you, which yep. you, you know, which is yes. But, um, but it could be that they publish their own interactive version um, of their textbook. Um, so that depends. Um, if you use things through the Edge browser, which um, is Microsoft's Internet Explorer. Um, so I'm using Edge browser right now. That's how we've accessed Word Online. And now I have this website. Um, again, it's very popular with schools. Um, it's called Tween Tribune. And uh, this is a lot of great content for kids K to 12. Um, so you'll see over here on the left, I've got, you know, animals, culture, food and health, national news. I've got all these topics. Then you'll see up here at Lexile Levels, um, your different reading materials, which is really awesome. But um, again, using the Edge browser to pull up different things, I can do a couple of different things. Um, if you'll notice my toolbar up here, I have a book symbol. And when I have that in bold, I can click on that. And then it'll wipe out the ads. It's assuming I prefer to have a reading view and that's what that's called. So it's wiping out the ads for me. And then I can click on read aloud. Interactive map shines a spotlight on women's cultural cut. And so here I've got my skip ahead, skip back, pause, play. Um, I've got my voice speed and voice selection. And then we have, and again, this is mainstream internet. Um, so we've got tools, we've got our page colors, our grammar tools, we've got our reading preferences, we have our text options, which for me is already on because it's got that memory and it knows I like to have bigger text. Probably in denial that I need some glasses here. <laughs> um, so, so that's, you know, through Edge Browser. You can load an EPUB file of a book through Edge Browser and and then go ahead and access these tools again in that manner um uh certain companies right now like let's say um textbook companies are are plugging in immersive reader as a cognitive service so if if it's something that educators and students are are working with uh, they now have those capabilities they're working with us to plug in immersive reader so that they can ensure that their students and educators have accessible content via our tools. Um, Flipgrid, if you have Flipgrid in the classroom, they have Immersive Reader built into that. And so it's just that little icon button on the right that you can click on in, in most of the text. Um, so I hope that answers that question. Yeah, I think as we're, as you're pointing out, more and more programs are, are building it in mm -hmm. because it is uh, a major force. Yes. And makes things so much easier for a large number of kids or adults, for that matter. It does. It does. Um, so, do we have any comments in the chat um, right now? Otherwise, I'm going to I'm going to wow you with another way we can get content in into. Um, no, just people thanking you. They're thanking us. Oh, yes, that's thanking great. you. I thanking you. Hear some. I love to hear positive comments. Um, Okay, so let's let's think about, um, let's see, I'll, I'll show you an example. Let's go over to OneNote because we can really personalize this with our group today. And so this is what's really fun about doing a more interactive um, here. So I'm gonna go into my son's notebook and, um, or last year's notebook anyway. Quite frequently, he will come home with what you see on the screen right now. It says, The Possibility of Evil by Shirley Jackson. And this is a multi-page language arts assignment. And now my son was diagnosed with dyslexia in kindergarten um, and he got his um, structured literacy interventions immediately. So he actually doesn't know what it's like to struggle to read. He reads, he reads quite fine um, and at grade level, but things like this, and again, it's not an eye issue, but things like this will, will get him really irritated. Um, and the thing is, is that everything's very closely kerned together and it's in a certain size font and it just makes it a little bit difficult. So he'll come home, or in this instance, he came home with this multi-page assignment that needed to be read by tomorrow, mom, can you believe it? And I was like, yes, I can believe it. And that's not going to be a really big deal. And so he hemmed and hawed over that. And I said, well, here's, here's the thing. 
you've got to read it and your choice is either you sight read it or you ear read it, which one would you like to do? And so at that point, um, the barrier and the roadblock was, was after a long day of processing lots of information, he was just done and he wanted to ear read. And so you can tell that these are photographs. I, I think most of you can probably tell that. And so we have another tool that enables us to load things right into OneNote and um, with a click of a button. Watch this. I click on the View tab in Immersive Reader. And look at that. That photograph is now going to be a open read. A princess can be a lot of trouble sometimes. Miss Strangeworth. So there's our photograph being read. Um, we also have Picture Dictionary. Sometimes it takes a minute. There we go. So all of these things immediately are enabled um, from a photograph. And I'm going to show you how that was possible. So we have this really awesome tool built into, or this really awesome app called Office Lens. And I'm going to show you a really quick video on how it works. And then we'll talk a little bit more about it. Move down. No, move, move, move up. Ready. Document, image, immersive reader. Okay, I'm gonna pause it right there. So you could see that it was scanning a, the document and it was pretty much telling someone how to do that. And keep in mind, um, that's because sometimes we have people who are not seeing and um, they need to be able to understand if they're scanning the document. So it scans the document and runs OCR on it, which is otherwise known as optical character recognition so that you can have text to speech. Right here, it's giving you your choices of where you're going to send that. So you could send it to OneNote or because Immersive Reader selected here, what you're gonna see is that person is using their device right then and there to enable text to speech. Button. Scan, in, scanning to text. Geography, the study of Earth's land. Okay, so this video is actually just a wee bit out of date. Um, we do have within Office Lens now the ability to change your background color, your text sizing, and some of the similar things that I've shown you in Immersive Reader. So this, you're not seeing that with this right now, but at the same rate, you're seeing that we can scan a document, run OCR on it, and have text to speech. And that is exactly what Office Lens does. And so think about our um, middle school, high school, or college and beyond, individuals who um, might be out there in the world needing to access, um, access print and having difficulty. And oftentimes they have a device on their person. And so right here, you can get this free app um, in the App Store. And the reason I have it paused on this slide is this, is this is what it looks like in the App Store. It is called Microsoft Office Lens. It's free. Any iPhone, Android, iPad, or computer device that takes photos, you can put it on. And I mean, it's just an amazing tool. So that's what enabled my son to be able to quickly and easily, and in our case, we loaded it into OneNote notebook, um, but quickly and easily be able to, um, as I call it, ear read his text. Um, but, then, but then what's he gonna fight with you about? I don't know. I, I mean, he's got plenty of other things. Oh, okay. <laughs> we could go on and on about that because he's 13 now. So <laughs> plenty. I, I'm at uh, no shortage there. Oh, another so, really um, good question. Uh, can we, yeah. can you do this through Teams as well? Microsoft Teams. Right. I actually have not seen Office Lens done through Teams. Um, that's a really good question. I don't know the answer to it, um, but I know where we can find out. If someone would um, you want to send me an email, I will ask about whether it's possible to use. I'm sorry, were you? I apologize. You meant whether Immersive Reader was possible in Teams, correct? Not whether Office Lens is possible in Teams. Oh, I th yes, yes. So Immersive Reader is available in Teams. Um, and Outlook email and so many, many places. Um, let me show you one more thing you can do with Office Lens that, um, again, not really knowing the backgrounds here, what, what grades you guys are working with in our audience here, but just kind of making a general assumption. Um, let me show you something else I have found to work really well for, again, for my son. 
So oftentimes he has difficulty with um, completing worksheets and mainly because he also struggles with dysgraphia. And so writing in the small spaces of worksheets like I have right here can be very difficult for him because it's the manual task of writing, it's spelling and it's kind of, um, you know, sequencing everything and, and getting it all into that small space. And so it will take him forever. You can see under this first one that we actually erased um, what he had written and it took him for a half an hour to just write um, five words under number one. And so when I saw he was struggling with that, we opened up Office Lens and we took a photo. And then before you send that photo anywhere, you could see once you've snapped the photo up in the right hand corner, you'll have a couple of different icons. And I clicked on the T for text and we grabbed a text box and we moved them around on top of the photograph on my phone and so you can shrink them or enlarge them and then we use the dictate button on the phone to dictate what his answer was and then further um, saving him and I like to say his educator we just sent the photo via, via email and so homework was done it no longer like in this instance it did not disappear into that black hole that snatches up homework um, so um, it was readable um, he was able to articulate his thoughts and it actually got turned in. So I think it was a win-win there. <laughs> Me too. Okay. Um, I feel like there was another something we were going to explore quickly as we move on. Let's talk about, um, let's talk about some math tools that were recently developed. And so I am going to, let's see. Look at, look at a couple math equations. So this is another really neat, um, a neat thing with um, OneNote notebook and just wanting to show, let's find the one I'm looking for. So OneNote Notebook also has the ability to help students um, who struggle with math or really any individual be able to solve math equations. And so you can either type something in or you can write it in. Um, we have a couple of different ways you can get information in. And then when you click on it, um, and you can highlight the text, and then go under the insert tab and go to math and it'll ask you what action you'd like. And so in my case, I would like help solving for X. And so here um, it'll, it'll solve for me kind of like a calculator, but also, um, you know, in my, in my, um, what I need is I need help understanding how did we get there? Um, and so that's my struggle. And so here it'll lay out the steps. And then also you'll notice that we have the immersive reader button here. So again, if you're an individual who struggles with reading, um, you can have that immersive reader experience. You can have it read aloud to you, um, which doesn't look like it's, oh, there we go. It's coming through. So you can click your text to speech for there. Solving linear. Have that read aloud. Again, the steps are right down here. And then what's really amazing is, um, let's say you want to generate a practice quiz based upon some of this stuff. You can click the button. They have a practice quiz generated, and it'll pull from um, examples like that. So here you can click the number of questions um, and, and generate a quiz so that you can practice um, your math. So I think this is another really neat tool. I haven't had a lot of um, exploration on it myself with my kids, but um, it's there, it's built in and accessible to everyone. So I would encourage them to check it out. And do, do either of your kids use this uh, to help them with math? So um, full disclosure, as a parent of individuals with learning disabilities, I too struggle with learning disability. Mine is dyscalculia. And so really, um, when it comes to things like this, it kind of tends to scare me. But I will tell you something that's really fun about it for me is for the first time in my life, I can understand how we get to certain things with algebra. So it enables me to actually help my fifth grade son who doesn't have any trouble with math, but I can actually help him with his homework now because of a tool like this, which is something that I never was able to do before. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, so it's kind of fun. Um, 
And I can't really use that excuse with my husband anymore that I don't know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's talk about, okay, we covered, um, we covered immersive reader in OneNote. We covered immersive reader in Edge. We're online in Edge browser. Thank you. And um, we also covered um, alternative format to loading information and accessing immersive reader, which was Office Lens. We just looked at some math tools. And how about let's, um, with our remaining time, talk about some of the tools that enable people to become better writers or help them with their writing tasks. And so we're going to go into Word. <laughs> And I'm going to show you some of the different tools. Actually, better yet, I'm going to show you a student example first so that um, you can see exactly what a difference these tools can make in students' lives. And so as I frequently do, I will use my son as a guinea pig. And we'll go with something that he did here. It's only fair game. So let's go with a uh, language arts assignment here. So here's a before and after. Um, you can see that writing manually is very difficult for my son. And uh, the assignment was to write a one page story. And, and he did. Um, unfortunately, it took about an hour of his special education class time. And um, so it's a very laborious task for him. And you can see he got really big in the middle really big at the end, making sure to fill up those spaces. The thing is, when he brought this home, um, you know, I asked him about the story because I know it's not really indicative of his thought process. And he can paint a beautiful story just if you sit down and ask him. And his teacher will often tell me that too. And so um, after looking at this and knowing what he wanted to say, I showed him dictation. And then this, this is the after. This is what he did completely on his own um, with, without any help from me. And uh, it took him 12 minutes from start to finish, including the editing. And so what the really fun piece for me was that he went to school with this assignment afterwards, uh, the before and the after. And I got a phone call from the school uh, a couple days later from the principal's office. And he's, you know, they said, Mrs. Berger, would you come in and meet with us? And um, I, I honestly thought I was in trouble over something. But it was a meeting with his language arts teacher, his um, special ed case manager, and um, the district tech person. Because they said, we want to know how you did this. Because we would let, you know, the language arts teacher said, I have many students that are like your son. And I want them to be able to have access to, to the tools that he used. So it was kind of fun. It was a win-win situation for all of us. And this is now his preferred method of creating content. So it's built into, I um, mean, you can use dictation in OneNote notebook. Um, so it's, it's automatically built in that you can dictate right over here. And you can set your language as well. Um, and then you know you've got different, um, you know, page titles and headings and um, your Whoops, not that, your style. So you can use OneNote for, for writing. However, my son uses Word um, because Word it has been created for writing and that is the place where you're gonna have um, a lot more tools. So let's talk about Word and we are in Word desktop right now. And I'm gonna show you how this was possible for my child. So firstly, we have dictation and that's up here to the right. Dictate is something that is now built in. It used to be a download, but now it's just automatic. Um, and I've got it in two places. I've got it up here um, in the ribbon. And then I've also, like I said, I have it just kind of built in. So either way, they're both the same. They both work the same. Using Microsoft Dictation in Word to help create content. Okay, so you can see that clearly picked up what I was saying there. Frequently, educators will ask me, well, what about when you're in a classroom? And the software was created in a way that, honestly, it's, it's focusing on the voice that's closest to it. Um, but, but sometimes we do have other kids in a classroom dictating at the same time and maybe in a closer space. And so sometimes 
using a headset with that speaker, um, like what you're doing, Mitchell, right now on yeah. our webinar, that can greatly help that. But I will say I have used dictation um, when I'm speaking at conferences, sometimes in busy exhibit halls, and I find very little, little error. I personally was a subscriber to other dictation software for, um, I should say I was more like a donor. I trained it, it just didn't work effectively for me. I wanted something that was like my iPhone, and this this is this is it. And you have it built into Outlook. Um, it's in Word. It's also in PowerPoint, and so it's it's there and easy to use. And so again, using dictation, but then also toggling between um, dictation and then the read aloud feature built under the review tab is what again enabled my son to quickly and effectively be able to write that paper. So he would dictate something and then he'd have it read back to him. The Amazon rainforest is an expansive forest location. So that's again, that's under the review tab in the read aloud button. And then what we're doing is off to the right, we have our uh, pause, play, um, skip ahead, skip back, and then there's speed and voice settings. Now, would your son use voice commands to do the editing or would he then use keyboard? No. Yeah, he uses his keyboard. You can use voice commands. Um, some people prefer that. He does like typing and he does like his keyboard. Um, so he kind of does, does a little a bit of both between dictating and typing. Um, the one thing that, you know, it's kind of funny, he's, he's very like me um, and that uh, this dictation works fast enough, whereas other dictation, um, it doesn't work quite as effectively. And then what happens is it stalls your thought process and then you're in all sorts of trouble. So, <laughs> so um, really, again, what he and I needed in that situation was something that was gonna very swiftly pick up what we're saying. So again, dictation and then the read aloud button under the review tab. Now, if you wanted to, um, you know, you have the full immersive reader experience um, you could certainly go under the view tab and click on immersive reader and then you have similarly to what I've shown you in Word Online and OneNote, um, you have these immersive reader features that you can change here. They, they look different in Word Desktop, but you've got your syllables, your text spacing, line focus, page colors, and even something that you haven't seen elsewhere, but column width. So you can change that as well. So that's immersive reader built in a Word desktop, but um, quite frequently, if you're just using dictation and read aloud for the creation of content, that might be enough. So there's a few other features here that I wanna show you before we, um, before we go. And one of those is our increased editing capability. So you can see that I've got things, you know, I've got a misspelled word and I've got, you know, little blue lines underneath uh, this sample here. And um, so I've got some errors in the document. If I wanted to simply just correct the word, I'd right click on principle and I'd get a drop down list and I could just correct that word and move on with life. However, I can see that, you know, I've, I've got different errors here. And so what I wanna do is I wanna pop up my editor pane. You're gonna find that under the review tab and you'll go all the way over to the left here and click on check document. And so when you do that, you're gonna um, engage the editor pane and it's gonna pull up everything that it finds under spelling, grammar, clarity and conciseness. Um, and so we can just go ahead and walk through that document. So you'll notice with the spelling here, we have increased our spell checking capabilities to really assist individuals who have trouble with reading and writing. And so previously you'd get a drop down list of potential words it could be, but if you have no context cues, it's really hard to disambiguate between, well, which version of principle did I mean? And so, and then you can also arrow to have that read aloud. Principle, similar to code, source, rule. Okay, so we can pick which one that we meant. We can move on. And then we continue to arrow through our document here, um, going through any grammar issues and checking where it's suggesting. And if you click the arrow over here to the left, it'll also give you a little bit more definition as to why we need to make these corrections. And so I think that's really a great learning opportunity as well. And so again, just using the editor pane to 
help individuals more independently be able to create that content. Um, all of these tools built in together really are a lifesaver when it comes to my sons being able to more effectively write uh, more independently and be able to personalize that experience to suit their needs. Um, so I think this is, I mean, I'm wondering where this was when I was in college because uh, my best friend was uh, whiteout. <laughs> And uh, we just didn't have things like this. Um, one last thing I think would be useful um, to call out is you'll see under the review tab here, I also have translate. And um, in, in the um, world that I work in, in advocacy, um, I find this button to be very helpful because when working with individuals who have learning differences, um, if their children are non-native speakers or if the parents are non-native speakers, but we want to ensure that every, everyone has a voice at the table when we're meeting with um, parents to talk about the child's IEP or 504, sometimes this translator button can be um, a real help to ensuring that everyone has a voice at the table on behalf of that student. And so you can just take any documents and click the translator button and you could translate a section or the entire document and that pane will pop up on the right hand side here. We can pick our language. And there, there's a question from Susan Howard, Susan Howard, although I'm not sure what she meant is how did you access editor again? Oh yeah, she went, how do you access the editor pane? So, oh, okay. Review tab, all the way over to the left where it says check document. And we're going to click on that, and then the editor pane automatically pops up. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so back to that translator. Again, there's many different reasons. It could be parent teacher communication. Um, like I said, it could be to help ensure that parents um, who are non native speakers have a voice at the table during a you know, IEP 504 or an other type of meeting. Um, but that translator button here, uh, as needed, could be your, your best friend there. So, um, and then again, once you use the translator button, you still have all those tools like Read Aloud um, and Immersive Reader that you can utilize um, as well. So really amazing set of features built in right there for, for everyone. Guess what? I forgot one thing I wanted to show you. Oh no. I know, That's, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's all built into the uh, <laughs> the um, the editor tools. It's word prediction. So word prediction is something that you can also utilize. There we go. So typing. So right here, it's a it's a setting that I've changed on my computer. And so um, you go to settings for here. And you can type in typing. I don't know why that gaming thing is popping up my screen. So what we would do is typing settings. And then we want to turn on show text suggestions as I type right here. So we're turn that on. So again, under the settings in your computer, again, if you've got a Windows-based computer, this, this is how um, you're going to access word prediction. You're going into settings, you're typing and typing, and then you're going to hardware or show text suggestions as I type under the typing. So that can be a really amazing tool as well. So I, I actually, um... I struggle with how how that's helpful because I have not, as I'm typing, I have not found the <laughs> suggestions helpful. Do, I'm, so, do you or do, or do other people? That's a really good question. I'd love to hear what other people have to say about that. I personally don't. I think it's because um, very likely we know what we want to say. We're fast at typing and we also maybe don't struggle as much with spelling, but when it comes to students, who are trying to find that next word and they're trying to create something and maybe they're typing or writing about something that's not experiential knowledge, I think that it might be very helpful to them, especially if they struggle with spelling. Okay. I was just, you know, but, but I guess you're the same as me then. It's, um, yeah, I don't, it doesn't work for me. I don't, I don't need, um, I don't need test suggestions. 
any super fast uh, dictation and um, you know, tech suggestion or yeah, tech suggestions not for me. I do know that my sons both utilize it um, heavily. So I think um, it all depends on the individual. I would love to hear what some of the uh, people joining us have to say about tech suggestions and what they think, um, whether it helps them or their students. Yeah, if any, any of you have tried it and you can uh, type in the, the group chat about your experiences or if anybody has found a really good use for it, that would be great. Okay, so I'm gonna show you before we go a couple of different things that I think um, people should know about. Uh, first of all, it's the Microsoft Educator Community. And we have, um, and that's education.microsoft.com. That's uh, called the MEC, Microsoft Educator Community. So we have a page here dedicated to um, immersive reader. And we've got this graph that tells you um, where you get certain features. Um, and different all sorts of links you can see here that I'm scrolling down to all sorts of great links and resources um, also the Microsoft educator community um, also offers great um, webinars and trainings that educators can have access to um, anytime they'd like so you can click on training and resources um, and there's just a ton of, of great information personally i do remember seeing that um, some of the educators that were joining us today had questions about dyslexia specifically and so i would highly recommend um, looking at the microsoft education courses there's a couple specifically on dyslexia um, that are done in conjunction with a group called Made by Dyslexia. And so again, I'm just kind of scrolling here, but again, education.microsoft.com um, and you'll find all kinds of, um, again, those training courses and helpful links. Um, some of the stuff that I've shown you today is available in, um, in the, um, I'm sorry, and these little webinars here on the techcommunity.microsoft.com. And so you can do um, these interactive um, videos on a lot of the stuff that I just walked you through. Um, so here's another great website um, for all about the immersive reader, all about um, inclusive writing and inclusive math. So these are available as well and I would personally check those out. A um, lot of great tools at your fingertips, a lot of great help. And then again, as I mentioned before, um, I am always available to um, answer any questions, help you connect, um, or help you troubleshoot any problems that you might have. Um, and do you last... go out to schools and support, you know, if oh, a school yeah. felt that they needed you, they could contract with you, to, you know, contact you and contract with you to go out there and help them? So um, I'm locally in Minneapolis, I can go to any schools here um, that would like some help and do a professional development. Um, what I do um, on, on a bigger scale, because I can't fly everywhere, um, I save that for the conferences, I do webinar um, professional developments as well. And so again, there's my email address. Should you have a cohort group of educators that you want to pull together and have a professional development webinar um, in the way that we've done it this evening, um, that's certainly available. And then what we have on the ground is I can connect you to, we have 80 Microsoft stores um, throughout the nation here that have a couple of different things. One, they've got training courses um, and workshops free for anybody to take, um, but they also have um, education experts within the store, most of them. And so I'm happy to connect you with their education experts who can go out um, and make visits to schools. And so that's a resource that I would highly recommend as well. And then I guess a, a, another question for me is you're, go, you're going to be at FETC. And yes. so what are you going to be talking about at FETC? I'm going to be talking about um, learning tools again um, and expanding a little bit more on, on some of the things that we discussed this evening and some of our new tools as well. And um, just, yeah, got, I've got a couple sessions on Microsoft learning tools and helping kids improve on their reading, writing, math, and overall accessibility. 
Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Are there any other questions from people who are attending this evening? You can type them in, or does anybody have anything, have any comments that they would like to make and want to unmute themselves to make it? Yeah, I'd love to hear comments. Or specific questions that people have about students that they have. Um, Oh yes, that would be great. Um, if anyone has a student in particular, would love to hear how we can help solve. Um, but that may be something that people will, will go through when they're face to face with you at FETC also, or they'll contact you individually. Mm -hmm. Yes, my email is available for that. Happy to answer any of those questions um, at any time for anyone. Okay, and is there like a final thing that you'd like to leave us with? Uh, really, I, I suppose I would like to thank you for spending your evening with me tonight and for learning um, and for really um, wanting to ensure that you're um, learning more about how you can remove roadblocks for students and help um, engage them more in the classroom. Um, Educators yes. have a lot on their plates, and um, and I I just think it's amazing um, the amount of dedication um, they have towards ensuring their students are successful. And you know, for me, when well, first of all, I want to thank you very much for for putting you know for spending the time and and your evening and and going through these tools with us. And it's it really is interesting to me to see how much emphasis Microsoft is now putting on education. Um, I would have said two or three years ago, or maybe four years ago, that really Google was was dominating the education field. But more and more, I'm seeing Microsoft putting resources in to help teachers and schools reach more students. So it's well good, good to see Microsoft. Um, absolutely, doing you're that. going to see them continue to do that. Um, they're building things into core um, products and across platforms, and their their mission is to empower every single person on the planet to achieve more. And from what I'm seeing, they really mean that. And as you know, again, from, from the hats that I wear, I, I am a huge um, fan. I absolutely love the, the accessibility that they're creating for individuals of all abilities. So, well, thank you. And uh, we have another session. You all, if, if you were able to reach us here, then you've been to edgeinteractive.org. Uh, we have a session coming up in two weeks on digital storytelling. Um, hope to see you then. Uh, hope everybody had a very happy and family-oriented Thanksgiving and that um, everybody takes some time to think about um, all the good things that are happening to all of us right now. And so I uh, want to wish you good night. Thank you, Rachel, again. Thank and, you. Um, this is Mitch Weisberg kind of signing off for EdChat Interactive and hope to see a number of you in a couple of weeks. Good night.